welcome to another episode of McCall Media TV with myself, Angela McCall. In today's video, I'm basically going to break up the activity of using LinkedIn events to populate your own mailing list, whether that be MailChimp, Active Campaign, uh, Constant Contact, etc., etc. It doesn't really matter where that list is, but you can use LinkedIn events as a very powerful way to grow your mailing list. Now, because there's three sections to this activity, I've made three videos. This is video part one, which is about the actual LinkedIn event creation. Part two will be about how you promote and invite people to that event. And then part three will be how you can use the data that's captured from people engaging with that event and use it to populate your mailing list. Fully GDPR compliant and basically help you sort of get that upward spiral of marketing online for you. Okay, so we're gonna go straight into this now on LinkedIn event creation. So I'm diving over to my left-hand monitor where you can see I've already navigated to my LinkedIn profile page. So the first thing I need to do is actually change to my company business page, okay? So this is where we get to control all the events that are going on, as you can see me circling my cursor just here. Now, the beauty of this, just one quick little tip for you before you dive into the actual event creation, is if you have an admin assistant or somebody out there that can help you, like a virtual assistant, if you're really busy like I am, this is a brilliant task to be able to delegate down to somebody else to help you out that's more time efficient for you. So they just need to be a manager of your business page on LinkedIn and they can do this whole video one section for this activity for you. Okay, so with that side note, let's just go in here right away and create an event. So I've just clicked on the plus sign. It's already populated with my business page here because we've navigated to that to begin with. If you do want to change the event headers and logos so that it has its own branding, maybe you're doing an expo event or something like that with its own branding and personality and style, you can change the images. I'm not going to do that uh, in this particular example today. So you can just obviously start off by writing an, an event name. So event name, name, there we go. Um, obviously putting the time and date. So I'm just gonna navigate to the end of the month. So I've got plenty of time to do this because this is just a quick video testing. Uh, I'm gonna leave as is, but obviously you'd put your description, uh, description details in here. And then uh, obviously your speakers. Now speakers, the more people you tag in and connect, obviously the more th this is gonna show up on their profiles and therefore you'll get exposure to their networks, etc., etc. So for the moment, because this is a, obviously a demo run, I'm just gonna type in here Fatma, which is my business assistant, so that I don't go pinging messages to a whole bunch of random people on my LinkedIn profile. But uh, essentially you can add a whole bunch of people in here. I think, you know, up to maybe about 10. I, I can't really remember the limit but I've definitely had a good sort of six, seven or so people in here before as uh, guest speakers. Uh, now moving on down into the settings here, um, you can see that I've selected this as a public event, which is fine. So you can obviously choose to make it a private event if you want, uh, but obviously the whole entire reason I'm making this video is to show you how you can use LinkedIn events to grow your mailing list. So leaving it public will be in your best interest if that's also your same similar goal. Now this one here, this checkbox, this is the little beauty. This is the bit that you must not forget to do. So when, when I click on it, you can see that it's now asked for my privacy policy, but the beauty here is it explains what's going on. So organizers can download the attendee details, which is brilliant, okay? This is fully GDPR compliant, which is why it's asking you now to populate this with your privacy policy, which I happen to have already uh, navigated to on my website. So I'm just gonna literally grab the, the URL, copy and paste job this is and pop it in there. And obviously you need to make sure this is your own due diligence that your privacy policy will actually cover you for things like this. But essentially, because this box is now ticked, anybody that engages, interacts and connects with this event on LinkedIn for the next six weeks until the event takes place means that I will be able to copy and download their details fully GDPR compliant and this is what we're going to cover in video three and basically upload them into my mailing list. So this is the beauty and the power of what we're doing today. Finally, you've got this option down here. Um, obviously, if it's an offline event, like real world face to face, put in the address, the venue details. And if it's also going out on the internet, you can put the broadcast linked. Um, obviously, if it's a networking event online via Zoom or something like that, you can put the link in here. You can also create the event with nothing as well. So I'm just gonna click on this create button right now. 
and lo and behold, the event is now live. So what it's asking me to do is, do I want to promote this on my actual McCall Media Limited company profile page within the LinkedIn uh, platform. So uh, McCall Media Limited is hosting an event and obviously it's populated with the name of the event. Would you like to, to attend? Please look at the details below for more info kind of thing. And then like happy face, whatever you want to put in there. Now it does help with all things on social media these days to embrace the hashtag. So for example, if this was a networking event, you might want to put the word networking in there. And as you can see instantly, the uh, LinkedIn platform is trying to help me and be useful by sort of saying these are popular hashtags already in use and you can do a couple of these I normally say do about three to five and no more so networking um, I don't know uh, zoom meeting I don't know zoom meetings etc etc and away you go populating it with your hashtags when you're happy you now just post this to the home page of your company profile and that pretty much wraps up the whole in the, the event creation process. If you want to find your way back to it, obviously it's populating it here now and instantly because this is me and I'm the business owner, it's asking me to invite people. But likewise, if your employee had done this and they've posted it out on the business page for you, you just might need to have them just send you, I don't know, a little email or, or a little message to just to say the event's gone live please now go in and uh, invite people and that's what we're going to be covering the whole promotional aspect and the inviting phase in the next video because there is a little bit of a strategy to it and uh, if you get it right it can save you a lot of time energy and effort so that's what we're going to be covering in video two so if you like this video please be sweet and click that subscribe button for me I am a small YouTube channel working really hard to help bring you tools resources insights hints tips and strategies to help you with your digital marketing and online media presence and obviously that little little click back and subscribe really helps me know that I'm doing the right thing for you guys if you've got any questions put the comments below I'll happily answer and I'll see you on the next video in just a second